What's up everyone, Marcus of Cradle Cat here. Mastering a song can seem so mysterious, especially at first when you're still learning about it, still learning how to hear the different things that are happening during mastering, and the results can be very hit or miss during that process. So to help with that, I've created a template here for Logic Pro X, which you can use for free to help jumpstart that journey for you into mastering. You can get the download link in the description below, but Make sure you keep watching this video so that you know which knobs to turn when, how things work. Otherwise, it's not going to sound as good if you just drop your song in it. All right, let's get started with how to use this template. So the first step is to install the template file. Um, so once you download it here, just go ahead and open that up, unzip that, and then you'll see a couple different things. We have our main template file. And then I've also included presets for the tracks specifically, if you just wanted to use it as a channel strip mastering setting within another session. So to get those into your presets for Logic Pro X, you'll want to, I've already kind of brought it up here in another finder window. You'll go to your hard drive, you'll go to users, you'll go to your username, and then you'll go to music, audio music apps, and here you can see the different areas where we'll drop them. So for the template, go ahead and click into Project Templates and then just drag that over into your Finder window. Um, go ahead and do that. I already had it, so it asked me to replace it, but that should drop it into your Project Template window. And then same thing if you want to do your tracks or uh, have, your, have it specifically on a preset on your track, then you can also go back out of project templates, go into channel strip settings, and drop it into either the track uh, folder here or in the output folder here for where you would drop the channel strip setting. I also have these in separate folders in the folder you'll download just so it's easier to know which one to drop where. Excellent. Now that we've got that downloaded and installed, let's jump into using that in a project. So first you'll pull up logic here, go to new from template. That'll pull up your template files that we have. And now you should see that Cradle Cat mastering template right here. Choose that as your starting point. And great, you've got the project open. So it's a little overview of what we have here. We have a few different tracks. Let's just get the lay of the land for what's happening. We have our mix track here, mix V1. We have two reference tracks and we have our master output bus. So this first mix track is where we will be doing the mastering and it's where we'll drop our mix file. So I'll go ahead and find that wave file for my song mix. Don't worry about tempo information. Now I've got that dropped in. When you have this in here, you wanna make sure that you have some headroom on that song to deal with. And what I mean by that is it, it shouldn't look like you know that, shouldn't be clipping. You should have some room to work with there, which we'll come back to later. Uh, so hold that thought on headroom. These reference tracks here are placeholders for you to drop in a song that you're referencing or comparing your song to as you're mastering it. So referencing is very important during the mastering process. And one way to think of it is like this. If you have a playlist of songs that you want to see your song on, you might want to choose a couple songs from that playlist and have your song be in a similar ballpark saturation wise or you know how much distortion it has on it, just so that when you're listening to your song in the middle of that playlist, it sounds like it fits into that playlist. So for this one, just to avoid copyright strikes or anything like that, I'm going to drop one of my other songs that I've already mastered in here. So I'll go ahead and do that here. I'll mute that for now. Great. And then just as another summary here for that last track, this master track, this is where we'll be doing the automation on the volume. Uh, just to make sure we have a clean and smooth start and end without any blips as we're exporting the song. So that's the basic setup for what's in this template. Let's come back up to the mix track here where we can walk through the plugin chain that we're working with for this mastering process. So the first two items are EQs. So we've got two EQs and the only thing that I already have set up on that for you is uh, we have two high pass filters at 23 and right around 23 hertz. The purpose of this is to just take out any super low end of the mix during this process. And uh, the reason for this is 
you're very likely not going to need any of that information below that 23 hertz range, uh, if even that. The other reason is if you're starting to deal with changing anything below that, you really want to make sure you have a monitor system that can handle those subfrequencies as well as a room that is treated for you to accurately hear those. So once you get into messing with things in that area, uh, you just want to really have an ear for it and also make sure you understand your listening environment. Otherwise, you're probably going to end up doing more harm than good by tweaking things in that in that really low area. So this is a safe way to do that. You know, it's not going to take out a ton even on uh, those super sub frequencies for um, for club environments. You know, it's not going to take out a ton of that area. Uh, it's just kind of a safety net to make sure you're not doing more harm than good. The reason we have this twice in a row is just to get even more of a steep cutoff. So these filters here or these uh, cutoffs are 48 decibels per octave. So uh, by layering them up, we just get essentially 96 decibels per octave that we're cutting. There are third-party plugins that have more of a brick wall uh, EQ filter setting for that. However, we're trying to use all stock plugins here, so just doing it with two in a row like that. After we have that basic cut out of the way, the next things that I'm listening for here on this step are just, I'll turn off these other ones here, uh, just trying to find any harsh frequencies that I don't like or just make broader sweeps on our EQ. So if we want to you know, raise up the uh, high end a little bit, that kind of thing. Just any broad strokes or specific frequencies that are standing out. The next step is using a compressor. So when I'm using this compressor, uh, what I'll end up doing here is going to where the loudest part of the song is, and that's where I want to pay attention to how that compressor is reacting. Um, because it's going to be the most extreme at that loudest portion of the song. And what I'm aiming for here is just a really light compression, usually moving the needle, you know, maybe a decibel or two at the most. So let's go ahead and listen to that part here and uh, start adjusting. You can see it's not moving it at all yet. This is where that headroom comment that I mentioned earlier, I wanted you to remember, we can handle here. So uh, headroom is how much space you have from the peak of your song to zero decibels. So uh, in this case, you know, I know I exported this mix a little lower, so I can either handle that by adjusting the threshold here on this compressor until it starts to react to the uh, song, to the audio that's coming in, or I can adjust the gain here of the mix itself. So this is going to be helpful if, let's say maybe you're mixing the uh, multiple songs in the same session. So if you're mixing an album and maybe you have it uh, a bunch of them laid out here, it can be helpful to sort of volume adjust these uh, at the beginning to have them more similar uh, so that they're, they're all roughly kind of hitting that same peak area, having some of that same loudness so that you can have a more consistent process once you get to this mastering stage and they're hitting those plugins at roughly the same levels. So I'm going to just bump it up there a little bit and then we'll do the rest of the adjustment on the compressor. Great. So that's about where I want to have that, just where it's starting to glue the song together a little bit. That's really the purpose of this one. So when the compressor is reacting to the kick and it's compressing everything all at once, that process kind of makes it feel more cohesive, gluing all those individual parts together a little bit better. The things that you can play around with here are the ratio. I usually try to keep that pretty low at this phase, you know, somewhere around like 1.5 you know, at the max there, uh, somewhere somewhere in that range. And again, just adjusting the threshold here to see that needle dip, just a decibel or two. So those are the main settings I play with. And as you start to get your ear developed with it, you can continue to mess around with some of that attack and release or even blend in that signal of the compressor uh, just so that you know, maybe you're compressing it a little harder, but you're only blending it in 50%, for example. So those are some of the other things you can start to play with, um, but this is a decent starting point for 
not doing too much damage uh, as you're as you're starting to learn and, and starting to develop your ear there. So just a little subtle gluing together there on the compression. The other thing we're doing there is just a little slight coloring from the compressor, just how it sounds. So as you start to add these plugins, just pay attention to what it's doing to the sound. So for example, you know, when we're listening here, just along the way, go ahead and turn on and off those plugins, start to train your ear a little bit on what's happening. So here you can start to hear. So you can start to hear a little change in sound uh, as well as the actual uh, compression starting to glue things together there. So next up, we have our multi-presser or a multi-band compressor. And this is great for overall balancing of the mix if it needs a little bit and just taming some of the parts if certain areas of your frequency spectrum are a little more dynamic than others where you don't want them to be. On a good mix file, I don't usually use this at all. And if I do, it's very sparingly. Uh, so as you start to drive this harder, just be careful because it does take a while to start to hear what's happening, or at least it took me a while to train my ear on, on what's happening and what that multipressor is actually doing. And because it uh, can be different in each band, it's a, it was a little harder for me to start to understand what was changing in the sound. So just be careful as you drive this harder. And again, if you have a good mix, um, I wouldn't really mess with this at all. Uh, or if you do, just have it very, very slight. So just as an example here, let's go ahead and take a listen. So you'll just be slowly kind of messing with these levels here so that it's barely blipping those most of the time. So again, in that loud part, you know, I don't want to be doing something like this. Because you can see there, it basically removed the low end and really took it down uh, because it was compressing it so hard. Um, but because nothing else is really being compressed, it's it, it can be difficult to hear that at first. So as you start to play around with these, just be wary of that. The other thing to make sure of here is that you still have some headroom coming out so that it's not clipping coming out of this multi-compressor. Uh, same thing goes for those previous plugins or anything after this as well uh, on that compressor, just making sure that it's not clipping coming out of that. Uh, and if you left enough headroom at the first step, that, that really shouldn't be an issue, but um, just pay attention to that. And you know, if you accidentally bumped up your makeup gain a ton, for example, then you might end up clipping coming out of this, and it's gonna change how the multi-presser or that whatever that next plugin is, is handling the audio because it's coming in so much louder. After that multi-compressor, we have a little bit of saturation, which is being handled by Fat FX. So again, there are a lot of third-party plugins that are very good and very specific for this saturation or adding harmonics to your mix. This is the best that I could find in a stock Logic Pro plugin for how to add a similar effect here during the mastering step. So saturation can add perceived loudness to your mix. It also adds just a little bit of character or the those upper harmonics to make it, uh, give it a little more of a distorted or just saturated sound. And the best thing you can do for this is refer back to those reference tracks that you've dropped in here because different genres have different amounts of how saturated or how much of that character songs in the genre have. So um, just pay attention to that and flip back and forth as you're adjusting this to try to best match the sound character of other songs on those playlists that you want to see your song being played on. The main controls that we'll work with here are in this distortion box. So you can see that here we have a tube saturation, uh, saturation distortion, uh, and an exciter type distortion. So I've roughly set those to something that's pretty mild, but similar to the third party plugins that I've used and, and how uh, those affect the sound. So I've tried to match that pretty well. And the other uh, main thing we'll be using is this overall mix knob here on the master. Some of the things that you'll hear, generally when I'm hearing this, I'm hearing a little more low end the more that I put the tube distortion on. 
the overall saturation treats the EQ spectrum pretty equally to my ear there. And then Exciter tends to handle a little more of the upper range, right? I hear that changed a little more. So those are the general characters of what's happening on each of those. Let's go ahead and just take a listen here. I'll move the knob a little bit. So you can just see that quick example there, sort of the little more lower punch, just overall saturation. And then again, hopefully you heard some of that more upper range being affected there. The other thing is this mix knob. So again, let's just play with that. And then I've got that set to 50 as the default. So that's a pretty good starting point there for working with this saturation. The other module you may work with is this bass enhancer. So if you're finding that the song does not have enough low end, and maybe you've also tried you know, boosting the EQ, that would definitely be the first step I recommend. That's going to be uh, kind of easier to hear and, and work with. You might also be able to use the amount on the bass enhancer here and mess with which frequency you want that centered at. Um, but uh, again, that's a little harder to hear and harder to do well at this step if it wasn't already right in the mix. So um, I would first you know, try adjusting the overall broad sweep of a little bit of a boost on the low end there. Uh, and if that still feels like you're not getting the low end you want, you can start to play with this bass enhancer here. So you can really hear it start to affect the kick and bring that kick drum out much more in the song here. So let's just take a quick on-off listen here with the saturation. Again, we'll come back to this with the reference as well just to compare that. The Last main plugin here is the limiter. So this is the step where we add loudness to the tracks. So this is the thing that everybody thinks is mastering at first and just, just loudness adjustment. And that is a major component of it, but hopefully seeing those other settings here, the other plugins first, how you can glue the track a little bit, just affect the overall sound and start to make it fit in better sound-wise with other songs that you want to hear it played next to. Those are all other changes other than just loudness that you're doing during this mastering step. As we're setting how loud we want this track to be or how hard we're driving this limiter, ironically, we're not going to try to volume match exactly to our references. The reason for that is that the streaming services will volume normalize different songs. So even if you directly match something or you make it louder or you make it less loud, they adjust the volumes so that the listening experience is more even for their users. So instead, what we're going to do is volume match our listening experience here to the uh, reference track so we can better judge the overall character of the sound and go back and make sure we're making those adjustments to saturation, compression, that sort of thing um, as, we're, as we're working with it. The goal for us here in limiting is to get the best sounding version of our song we can how dynamic you want it to be, how uh, you know, how squashed you want it to be, setting that so that it's the best for your song, and then adjusting that reference track, comparing all the other parts of it that we already looked through. So when I'm listening here to my reference, let's go ahead and take a listen here. The other thing I'll do is I'll just move the reference tracks so that the loud parts line up so I can more easily switch back and forth between them. So I'll find the loud part here. Should be around here. Yeah, somewhere. So right here is sort of the loud part of both songs now. So I've got this one pulled up. I've lined that up here. And now I can more easily switch back and forth. The other tools that we're going to be using during this step are the meters that we have on this stereo out bus. So this is where I can... Uh, just get some visual indicators of what's happening. You can definitely do this by ear uh, if you want, or uh, this is just always helpful for seeing that overall loudness and also judging overall how 
loud your actual song is going to be. So when I solo this here, I can hear the loud portion again. Let's jump over there. Right now, very low. It's around minus 20. So as we start to bring up our limiter, Now it's dropping to around minus eight and a half, something around there for the, the loud part. You'll also notice on this limiter, we have output ceiling set to minus one decibels and true peak detection set as on. I wouldn't recommend changing those. Uh, those are settings that prevent some problems that might happen further in the streaming process. So uh, for example, if you're exporting as a wave, that might be fine to have a perfect output ceiling at zero there. But once it's converted for streaming or compressed for streaming or compressed as an MP3, that process can reintroduce some peaks that go above that ceiling and leaving that minus one gap just gives you some breathing room there, prevents some of those problems down the line. So I'd recommend leaving that at minus one, true peak detection on, and that should help with some of those potential issues. But the first thing I'll do is a general rule of thumb for how loud to set this is somewhere around, you know, minus 9 dB, depending on your genre. That's like a very broad stroke, but um, that's that's a general starting point is your short-term loudness. So over a period of six seconds, what's the integrated loudness essentially? Um, so, so over a period of six seconds, what's the short-term loudness measure? So you can go ahead, go to that loudest portion of your song, and with your limiter set, go ahead and So once we have that generally set, this is where we'll go ahead and volume match that reference. So now listening here, we'll just flip back and forth between these. So these are... Generally, uh, the same kind of listening loudness here for me. Uh, that's because I also mastered this one, so it's going to be roughly the same there. If you're pulling it from another song, uh, what you'll often see is these are very, very loud. So if we're just pretending that's louder, you'll just want to drag that down so that when you're listening back, those experiences are pretty similar as you're flipping back and forth, just so that you can more accurately judge the other characters other than loudness as you're comparing them. Otherwise, the louder one's always going to sound better. So you just this is a way to get rid of that bias and, and just pay attention to other things about that song, the distortion, the uh, compression, those sort of things, without having to worry about how loud is it. So now that we can toggle back and forth more accurately, let's go ahead and just listen here and then start to tweak some of the other settings to match it. Okay, so after fiddling around a little bit and flipping back and forth, here's what we ended up with. And just to see the loudness here, let's take a look. part and just flipping back and forth there you could see it was really I was trying to focus on the character there of the distortion especially uh, and try to get that matching roughly so that it sounds in a, in a similar place. After that the last step again is just setting up our master bus here with the volume automation so that it is a clean fade in fade out so what we'll do here is just set our uh, cycle area Make sure your reference track is muted. And then go ahead, 
find the beginning of your track, where that's starting. If you have a little gap there at the beginning and you don't want as much, go ahead, bump that over. And here we'll just do a quick little automation fade, make sure that it's coming in smoothly, avoid any blips if there were any in the file. Same thing here at the end, see where we want that to end. You can see it kind of starts to fade out here, so I'll end it here and uh, put our start of the fade here, just bring that down. Great, and then after that, you'll just need to go ahead, export that project as your WAV and MP3 files. Make sure include audio tail is not checked just so it only includes the cycle area that we've set up there. Make sure normalize is off because we've already set that up and then go ahead and export. So there is a lot more to mastering than this, but hopefully this is a helpful starting point for you. Just having that template, having that process that you can start to go through as you're going through and mastering your own songs or someone else's. If you found this video helpful, make sure you remember to let me know in the comments below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.